Herbert George Wells is considered to be one of the world's most important political minds of the 1920s and 30s. He was in great demand as a contributor to newspapers and journals, but he's best known for his science fiction stories, such as Time Machine, 1895, Island of Dr. Moreau, 1896, Invisible Man, 1897, and War of Worlds, 1898. H.G. Wells' lesser-known work includes right-in-your-face tomes on elite-ruled one-world government. In particular, these books include The Open Conspiracy, Blueprints for a World Revolution, 1928, The Shape of Things to Come, The Ultimate Revolution, 1933, and aptly named The New World Order, 1940. Wells acted as a spokesman for real ringleaders working behind the scenes. He was a frontman for Cecil Rhodes' Trust Roundtable Secret Society. The Roundtable later branched out to spawn the influential Council on Foreign Relations. Wells was an intimate of the Rothschild allied Sassoons, who had made their fortune from opium shipping. Wells tutored the infamous Aldous Huxley, who spearheaded the Tavistock LSD project, and was the grandson of Thomas H. Huxley, one of the founders of the Rhodes Roundtable Group. In his book The Shape of Things to Come the Ultimate Revolution, Wells exhibits a particular fondness for the adjective illuminating when describing an idea he especially liked. He demonstrated lizard-licking fondness for the revelation of method, secret handshakes, in-group references, and cant language to reveal their presence to their cohorts and to befuddle the profane masses. In the style of the science fiction of the time, the book is introduced as the factual work of a Dr. Raven, a deceased friend of Wells, and member of the Geneva Secretariat. The good doctor's worldview professes that a one-world government is manifestly the only possible solution of the human problem. He then proceeds to prophesy the future. Wells' timeline was off, stretching further out into the future, but he definitely had the tenor of subsequent events. He doesn't look like a mere science fiction writer, but rather an actor privy to the plans of men with an interest in promoting the coming of the dictatorial world state. Dr. Raven opined, the evolution of communications and transportation has brought the human race into closer contact than ever before, adding that distribution, paper supply, and news services had fallen into the hands of powerful groups, able and willing to crush out any inimical schools of public suggestion they set about stereotyping the public mind. Wells even indicates the presence of conspiratorial factions behind this vast totalitarian scheme of the unified world order. Of course, these were the sort of men who, in real life, were cozy in London's exclusive clubs. He then perfectly describes what we point out on these pages so often. Strange mystery men were dimly visible through a fog of baffling evasions and misstatements, manipulating prices and exchanges. Another big obscure financial force in the war and post-war periods, Wells goes on, was the complex of great private banking ganglia, of which Morgan & Company, Rothschild, Warburg and & Schiff Banks, and their associated firms, were most central. This was furthered by what Wells described as unnamed offshoots yet to come, that would be the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Club of Rome, the Tavistock Institute, the Bilderbergers and such institutions as the United Nations, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. In 1933, Wells nailed World War II pretty closely. He wrote the war would begin in 1940 in Poland. And rather than it being about Germany standing for abused German ethnics in Poland, he diminishes it and makes it about an imagined slight taken by a Nazi over the actions of a Pole of Jewish origin. He characterizes World War II as it was, an orgy of world violence, and has the fighting end in 1949. In his chapter called The Raid of the Germs, he writes that the post-World War II era would be about rampant disease, resistant viral strains, and persistent rumors about the military engineering some of those same diseases. In reality, what we got instead was slow kill over a rampant one, at least until recently. 
In Wells' scenario, years of terrible war and disease result in the near-total disintegration of society. On the timeline, he places the final breakup of the nation-states and America in liquidation, as happening in 1966, when the great patchwork of empires and nationalist states, set up during the age of European predominance, lost its defining lines, lost its contrasted cultures and its elaborated traditions. It would seem he got the gradual deconstructing of nation-states, but failed to put the America's liquidation near the end, as in now, as a planetary mopping-up operation. Wells places responsibility for the creation of the new world order in the lap of scientists of the future, the group he dubs the technocracy. Its revolutionary nature was understood by few people other than its promoters, Wells wrote. He refers to the formal institution of the technocracy as the New World Order, and calls it by any other name, the Second Conference of Basra in 1978. The thesis-antithesis synthesis that culminates in the technocracy is the product of Hegelian thinking. This is the philosophy as well as the method by which the Welsh vision of the New World Order, New Underworld Order, has come to pass in our own time. His other revelation of the method book is the Open Conspiracy Blueprints for a World Revolution, 1928, in which Wells proposes several plans for the neo-feudal serfs. The determination to replace private, local, or national ownership of at least credit transport and staple production by a responsible world directorate serving the common ends of the race. The practical recognition of the necessity for world biological controls, for example, of population and disease. The supreme duty of subordinating the personal life to the creation of a world directorate capable of these tasks. In 1937, Wells even predicted a version of Wikipedia. He called it the permanent world encyclopedia. It would be written and controlled, naturally, by Brits, Americans, and Jews. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.